Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. I hope you enjoy. We need to talk about our human problem. A tale from the Pirate King, written by that 2009 weird emo kid. Also, the author has a book for sale, and it will be linked in the description. Lozyak didn't question the summons. She assumed nobody else would, either. It came from the Pirate King himself. He wouldn't waste their time if it wasn't a serious matter. The encrypted message implied that they were all dealing with the same pest, a bounty hunter from a relatively new species of hairless primates called humans. The five warlords of the Black Web had ruled the criminal underground for a century, rarely meeting for anything. Logistical issues from warping towards the same location at the same time made them too easy to track, and having all of them together created an alluring target for any authorities to raid them. This could be circumvented through several methods, namely bribes and strategic shuttling with decoys, but it ignored the main reason these individuals avoided fraternizing. They just couldn't stand each other's presence. In fact, most of the time, every warlord was actively trying to undermine one another. They only had an unspoken agreement and an alliance of convenience against the Federation and nothing else. Held together by one thing that they held sacred above all else, tax-free profit. As soon as one of them became a liability or lost their leverage, they had no problem eliminating them. Bearing all of this in mind, Lozyak didn't fear for her safety upon landing inside the asteroid fortress. She was in charge of all the drug, organ, and weapons trade in over 75% of the galaxy, a useful niche that the other warlords couldn't easily penetrate, not without knowledge, at least. Upon leaving their ships, they had to surrender all their weapons, but Lozyak found a way around that, so she had to assume the others may have done the same. It was a rather odd innovation that her top researchers developed. An organic las gun made from plastic and the glands of species that could shoot beams out of their mouths. The perfect weapon for smugglers. Lozyak eyed the energy field at the entrance gate with trepidation. It would detect any conventional weapons after walking through it. A small part of her dreaded being caught, since she wasn't entirely certain her scheme would work. But the risk was worth it. Someone had to test it, and the Pirate King's defenses were the best in the galaxy. If it could fool his scanners, then the Federation's security measures stood no chance either. The Pirate King wouldn't forgive the transgression, though. He was the most cunning and cruel of all warlords. Although none openly admitted, he acted as their unofficial leader, if only because he was the only one capable of demanding their presence when necessary. His power and influence was unrivaled, they didn't even know his real name, since the Pirate King seemed to value his privacy above all else. The last time a warlord tried to fool him, he ended up glassing their home planet with his personal fleet of space pirates, forcing the traitor to watch it all before executing them in front of the other warlords. Nobody dared to question him afterwards. Lorziak shook off her nervousness and walked through the energy field, closing her eyes as she did it. Nothing happened. Lorziak glanced over her shoulder, expecting an alarm or something, but it never came. Did she succeed? Lorziak didn't take it as a given. For all she knew, the Pirate King was merely leading her into a false sense of security, only to trap her once she delved deeper into the fortress. This military stronghold, known as the Tomb of Outlanders, was considered the most impregnable space station in all the galaxy. It voted in an asteroid field, among millions of other pieces of debris, making it undetectable to long-range scanners. Finding it without access to the encrypted beacon was impossible. And even if anyone could, it would take several battalions worth of battleships to launch an effective attack. If Lorzia were to be caught here, none of her underlings could do anything about it. She strolled down the white corridors, flinching at her own footsteps. This place was emptier than usual. Something felt wrong. The eerie silence weighed on her more than the simulated gravity, which gave her a slight headache. By the time she reached the meeting room, however, she had managed to calm her emotions. Finally, bellowed Orcrux, sitting on the left side of the metallic table. His species was known as the Wobbers, a bipedal race with porous blue skin that possessed telepathetic abilities. That took you so long, Lorziak frowned. None of your business. 
Really? I think it's all our business, considering you made us wait. I didn't make anyone wait. I simply arrived as conditions allowed. And yet you made a pit stop in Odota 7. Why? Lorziak narrowed her eyes. She did it to pick up her organic lair's gun, but she wasn't about to admit that. Orquax was the biggest information broker in the galaxy. Clearly, he had people watching her. Did he really know about the weapon? No. He wouldn't be asking if he knew. This was merely a test. His telepathy wasn't strong enough to probe her shielded mind, so he was trying to weaken her defenses through intimidation. Like I said, none of your business. I can't just drop everything at your convenience. How rude. You hear that, Pirate King? Your time isn't as valuable as hers. Rosiak stiffened up. Everyone in the room stared at the Pirate King, who sat at the end of the table, atop a mighty throne that loomed over them all. His expression remained stoic, unchanging. He didn't seem interested in commenting like usual. His species was rare, so scattered and infrequent that none of the warlords knew where he was from. Lorziak herself had never seen another of his kind. The man was huge, almost as big as a warrior Bohli, but with two arms and a pair of black horns protruding from his crimson head. The only thing that rivaled his immense strength was the incredible intellect. Nothing could get past him. Lorziak avoided eye contact with him as she sat down. Thankfully, he didn't say anything. Orquax hung his head, ashamed of being ignored. Are we starting? asked Kozath, exasperated. He was a bully, though only six feet tall, small by their standards. Despite this, he was one of the wealthiest members of his species, in charge of most of the illegal gambling in the galaxy, along with hosting many underground fighting arenas. I suppose, since we're all here, said the Afu, a fifth member, she was a covert, sentient balls of yellow slime that morphed to their shape at will, and the most brilliant financial mind in the known universe. Her ability to accounting and money laundering made her infamous throughout the Federation, an indispensable member of these loose coalition. In fact, the only person with a higher bounty than her was the Pirate King himself. Orquax then spoke, Well, uh, is there really anything to discuss? I think we're all in agreement. The humans have to be dealt with, by all means necessary. Indeed, nodding along a fur rippling with a gelatinous body. They're monstrous, they that need to be kept on a leash. I gave the order to assassinate their most important diplomat, only to discover they're immune to caffeine. Can you believe that? Not only are they immune, they willingly consume it as a beverage. She retched, disgusted. Monsters, I tell you. Kazarth sighed, almost embarrassed to agree. I, I need these humans gone. My business has suffered greatly after one of them fought Gork, the greatest bully fighter in the generation. They have now established an organization called the Interstellar Wrestling Alliance, and all of my best fighters are leaving to join it. Have you tried paying them better? asked Effa, chuckling. Kazarth scowled, ready to punch her. Just saying. This is serious interrupted Orquax. These humans may act innocent in the front of the Senate, but I can assure you they're more devious than they appear. One in particular exposed a branch of my spy network and ruined decades of work. A certain bounty hunter by the name of Sol, muttered the two other warlords, each angry in their own way. Lorziak squinted, surprised by the reaction. So you've all heard of him? How oh, can we not? said Afar. He captured one of my biggest clients, not only that, said Kazoth, slamming his fist into the table. That piece of crap, he slept with my wife. Everyone paused, caught off guard. Kazath sank into his chair. She left me, took the kids, I'm... I'm so alone. The far who usually tormented him, stayed uncharacteristically quiet. Kazath narrowed his three eyes. What? No vile snipe at me. Go on, get it over with. No, no said Afar, making herself small. I can't hear, hear. He slept with my husband, too. Holy shit, I said a quark stunned. For the first time in my life, I'm glad I'm single. Luzak shook her head. She couldn't help but pity them. Sol Goodman, captain of the class four ship Unseen Horizon, had intercepted many of her shipments. Millions of credits worth of smuggled goods, all seized and given to the Federation. It appeared that his escapades had affected the other warlords, too, although his competence was undeniable. What worried Lorziak was the most was his uncanny affability. 
Everyone who met him said that he was incredibly charming, to the point where tracking him was nigh impossible since no one wanted to rat him out. This seemed to be a trait humans as a whole possessed. That was their secret. Their capacity to make friends and stir the hearts of many had turned into their most dangerous weapon. It allowed them to have the most compelling athletes, the most effective diplomats, and the most likable bounty hunter in the galaxy. All while being pretty much average in every other area. Rosiak didn't fall for it, though. Something was wrong with these humans. They were too... Uh, perfect. No species could be that friendly. People in the Federation may be blind to it, enamored by their endearing qualities. But sooner or later, they would backfire on them. Lorziak cleared her throat and said, Well, uh, what do we do then? I think the answer is obvious, said Orquax. Soul has to be eliminated. It'll send the right message. Yes, uh, said Afar. We can pool our resources and lure him and his crew into a trap. And then we crush him, shouted Kozath. Sounds like a plan, said Lorsiak. What do you say, Pirate King? The Pirate King remained silent. The warlord shared a worried glance at each other. This was too unusual. The Pirate King was stoic and quiet, yes, but not to this degree, especially in a meeting that he himself convened. Is he all right? asked Lorsiak. Quox shrugged. Morrison, I don't know. I was the first to arrive and he hasn't spoken a word. Maybe he's asleep, said Kazath. With his eyes open, replied Afar. Who knows, said Quacks. We don't really know much about his species, right? Kazath pursed his lips, suddenly shy. Do, 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 we, do we wake him? You do it, said Afar. What? No, 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 you. Loziak rolled her eyes. Fine, I'll do it. She stood up and slowly approached him. Um, Pirate King? She grabbed his shoulder, shaking him a little. S sir? The pirate king slumped forward and his severed head rolled onto the table, oozing blue blood out of every orifice. All of the warlords shriek except for Lorziak, who was too shocked to react. About damn time, said an unknown person, applauding them at a leisurely pace. Lorziak widened her eyes. I was wondering when you were going to discover it. No, said Lorziak, terrified. It, it can't be. That was Sol. He had long brown hair, braided in a ponytail, and a red leather jacket with a lasgun on his waist. The bounty hunter strolled into the room saying, Seriously, I thought I'd be waiting all day. Um, well, technically not a day since we're on an asteroid, but you know what I mean. Lorziak blinked in disbelief. How are you? So handsome, smiled Sol. I don't know. He pointed at Kazath. Ask his wife. You son of a bitch! shouted Kazath, rising to his feet. I'll murder! Sol shot him in the head. The bull he fell over, dead. Nozick brandished her own last gun. Hold him right there. Sol raised his hands. Come on, that was self-defense. He threatened me. Lorziak narrowed her eyes. I don't know what you're planning, but this is the biggest mistake of your life. Orquax stopped her from firing, saying, Wait! He just let me read his mind, and he's something interesting to share. Hear him out. Nozick kept his last gun trained on him. Go on. Sol pursed his lips, nervous. Like he said, I have a proposal. One that could be incredibly beneficial to all of us. Rosiak scuffed. And we're supposed to believe you? Yep. Rosiak frowned. Elaborate, said Afar. Well, you see, I've been working with the Federation all this time, thinking that they were the good guys. But it turns out the Galactic Senate is about as corrupt as, well, every other Senate in history. As a matter of fact, they're currently having a meeting that's eerily similar to this one, trying to see if they can get rid of me. I can't imagine why, muttered Luziak. I know, right? All I did for them. You catch one corrupt senator, and all of a sudden they're all fearing for their lives. So that's it. You're just switching sides. Sol shook his head. Nothing changed, really. I value my freedom above all else, plus uh, I really like the title of Pirate King. Call it a boy who dreams. No, this is ridiculous. You've killed two of our allies. Is it? said Afar. I mean, uh, it's not like we haven't done worse to other members. Lorziak wrinkled her face, confused. Didn't you say that he slept with your husband? I mean, now that I've seen him in person. Afar's body turned slightly green, the covert equivalent of blushing. He is kind of cute. Sol winked. Thanks. You're not so bad either. Afar giggled. Ah, for feck's sakes, moaned Lorziak. Look, 
Sol said. I realize the circumstances aren't ideal, but think about it. I just killed a genocidal maniac that lost planets on a whim. A being so evil and antisocial, you didn't even notice his death until you absolutely needed an answer from him. Seriously, I literally found this place by asking nicely. And the people working here actually cheered after I took out their boss. Plus, the other guy, he pointed to Kazat's smoldering corpse, was an abusive jerk that struck his wife and kids. I killed him as a favor to her. Can working with me really be worse than these two? Rosiak took a moment to reassess the situation. To her annoyance, Sol was making complete sense. The warlords had never tolerated each other. If anything, this would be an upgrade. They were bound to gain vast riches under the leadership of someone as competent as him. And yet, Lorziak didn't trust him. It was the same problem she had with humans as a whole. This whole situation was too convenient. There had to be something else going on here. Lorziak didn't raise her concerns, though. She would just lay back and observe, for now. Orquax and Afar were already on board, kneeling in front of him. Lorziak loaded a lair's gun and said, The Pirate King is dead. Long live the Pirate King. Damn straight. Sol kicked away the old Pirate King's corpse to sit on the throne, making himself comfortable with a cheery smile. The galaxy has no clue what is in store for it. Just you wait. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barkey, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Lord Azrakul, and Arcadian. 